Uh, welcome uh, to the Heartland Select Board meeting of July the 5th, um, starting at 5.35. Uh, the first order of business is our um, the June 19th minutes. I would entertain a motion to accept the minutes for June 19th. I make a motion to accept them. Thank you. We'll a second. I'll second. Thanks, Bob. Any comments? So, Cheyenne, I was in a doctor's office waiting, and so my my things are obnoxious. I'm just going to hand you the little typos and all that. Uh, I move we approve the minutes. Any other <coughs> comments before we act on times? All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Cheyenne. Motion passes. Uh, I would entertain a motion to accept the orders for the accounts payable up through uh, July 5th. I'll make the motion to pay the payables up through July 5th. I'll second it. Thank you, Melinda. Any comments? Questions? Where does all the money go? Looks like Mr. Riley has some questions. We're going to let everybody else go first. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. Go. Uh, so, the wetland mapping, that's the Conservation Commission project? Yes. In, didn't they say that that was going to be covered by a private donation? Uh, no, they said the, the Summer Falls project is going to be covered by that. So that's a Summer so that's totally Falls separate, separate project. Yes, that's correct. Perfect. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. And Martin, with the architectural firm, Sakio, um, were these uh, payments? Along the way, or is this a final payment? Or no payment? payments along the way for uh, Damon Hall and the Rec Center. Okay. Any, <laughs> any updates from them? Uh, no, not yet. They're still, they're still digging through uh, culverts and buildings and elevator shafts. <laughs> well, and where's the Peter Miller old home day expense and head health? $475. So that's the pup pup at the, um, in, he's one of the vendors. Oh, okay. Right out in the field. Yeah. He's that golf course in the field. Yeah. During the full design. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Cot Systems monthly recording. Yes. Just remind me who they are. Um, they're, they're the company for the, uh, the clerk. The people can dial in and get deeds and okay. the records. So we also get revenue from them. So if people dial in and take copies and all, we get revenue anywhere from 30 to 100 bucks a month. I'm gonna go logistical question. So we're still buying dust control liquid? Yes. But it seems like this year, the last thing you need to worry about is dust control. Do we still need to buy that? Yeah, we do. Because the library, even with the rain, the library road was dusty when they started the construction project. Okay. And it and it it's good to have it when you're grading. It helps it helps seal the road. And unless you can tell better what the weather's going to be the rest of the summer than I can, it's better to have it on hand. Jennyville Culver. So is that project underway now? Uh, so yes, we we hired Arctic Creek to. Um, with the RFP, okay. um, I've got a hold of Rita, as I told the board two weeks ago, she would take care of that project the same as three points. She said she would. Okay. I'm hoping to put out an RFP by November 1st. Okay. So, so next summer, we're hoping to do it next summer. All right, so we're not doing the project, we're just doing the request. For we're getting the everything ready to go for so next July we can rock roll with it. Okay. So Otter Creek is the engineering firm. That's correct. Putting together the design? Yes. Okay. And that was payment, second payment towards. And then um, 
VHP three corners intersection. Yes, there are engineering firm on that. That's correct. So I thought we had finished paying them at this point. Uh, no, I believe they're still Rita. They still get in touch with them on what's going on. Um, do we know how? I mean, I think we have a fixed price contract. Right. The VHP. Yeah. I don't know that yet. So that before my time. It'd be interesting to know if we, because although we had a contract, we used it. We did a supplemental contract to extend them. So the question is really, where are we on that contract? Are we at the end, in the middle? Or? So they'll be on board till the end of the project. Yeah, but I, I guess where I'm heading is, uh, you know, are we in the budget for the contract, I, or are we just, the contract we just continue to pay them? Yeah. I'll find so, out that answer for you. Yeah, we will be going to them. I'll speak it up to that at some point for the lighting. Um, any, there was a for me. Okay, any other questions? Uh, all in favor of um, accepting the invoices up through uh, July 5th, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Thank you. Uh, at some point, I'd like for under future agenda items, we really need to address the cemetery and people wanting to use it. Okay. Yes. Okay. I guess I could have worded that. <laughs> yeah, I guess I was. But, but you wouldn't line yourself personally? All right. Well, I hope not. Can I come in here? <laughs> it's like you can get it's out. So <laughs> it's so peaceful there. Right, exactly. <laughs> Should we warn <want> Mary? <laughs> no, because you'll be looking at the insurance policy. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on, are there any public comments? Okay, sure. I just have a couple of things. I have you come up here, please. Thank you very much. I just have a couple quick things. I'm following up on um, the dog ordinance licensing last year from what we had last May. Yes. I was looking up the ordinance. It didn't really, I didn't find it, it didn't really reflect what we were doing. What we heard was being done via the town constable. It just gave it a generic. But from my understanding, from Brian, they were supposed to, the dogs are supposed to be removed. And the town constable said no, he'd rather talk to the people. So are we at 100 percent compliance now today? With all dog licenses? Yeah. I don't know. I doubt it. Uh, what what's where does it just have to specific what Heartland does? Right. We didn't I didn't read on our ordinance, right. what was currently, what was actually being done. Right. I don't know, is there, uh, does the state rulings come in here and control any of that? Because uh, we're reporting to the state uh, for licensed dogs for previous purposes and so on. I, I don't know. It gives, them, it gives us the authority to do so. Uh, and then it's up to the constable, right? Well, <laughs> Our ordinance says the dogs must be licensed. And if they're not, the state law statute comes in and says because the state requires all dogs to be licensed. Right. So, so it really has nothing to do with our ordinance. It's a are we compliant? I think the answer is no. Yeah. yeah the answer Have we no. ever been compliant? But they're not all licensed. They, well, that's why we did the warning last week was get out there and get them licensed. So do we have a time? A cutoff point but when I, this, this should think, be all in compliance. I think that was April 1st, right? Right. So now, now the ones that are not in compliance. Is there a compliance? We've turned, I think, and, and, you know, I don't want to speak for the entire board. I think we've turned that responsibility over to the constable. The constable has a process that he follows to reach out and contact people. Where he is in that process, we don't know at the moment. But do we, as a town, say, have a certain cutoff time that the day must be all. I think, I think we, well, our cutoff is, I think, the April 1st state. Oh, uh, sure. right, right? Yeah. Right. Um, Andy, you got some experience. Right. So what, 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 what have we traditionally We haven't yes. given, I don't think we've given James a date to have a computer. Should we? I mean, should we as a town? Because it's a public safety. It may be part of the statute. 
you know, they have so long to do this. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know the statute. Copy in front of me, but. I don't know that that is in the statute, but it probably also would depend on the number of dogs. If there were a hundred dogs, he could probably do so in, you know, a month. If there were five dogs, he could probably do so in a day. And then there's other factors. People work. Can he get in contact with them? Those sorts of things. Right. But as I said, is there a definite uh, at this point? Maybe the have it's already three months over. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, but we just turned this over to constable on the 19th, right? Probably. So, so it just, it's I, I mean, dropped off based on his <laughs> actions prior. You know, I'm, I'm comfortable that he'll do what he needs to put the line on. So, we can check with Ryan if we've ever been this time. You can leave it all by town clerk. I think we're compliant and doing no, our duty with like every it. dog is accounted for. I, I can't. Right. I'm not sure. We're compliant in that we've turned it over to the constable. Right. But where does it go from there? Well, he it was following up with him. But I think after a period of time, we'll probably circle back with him. But I think it's a little early enough for us this week. Um, we can. Um, I just made a note that. Uh, We'll clarify some of this to make sure that what we're yeah. saying is correct. Yeah. Um, there should be definitely a I think, I think we all know that there's been some problem cases that have been problems. Um, and I, I don't know um, if we've been able to address those entirely. Uh, but let me try to get more information. All right. So the other question I have is how come the parking lot on Station Road has never been maintained? To which? The parking lot on Station Road has never been maintained in 11 years since it's been put in. As far as what needs to be done? Well, according to the agreement, the, report. Yeah. the town is supposed to be maintained during the summertime. Okay. But is there, I mean, it's all grown up. The ditch is re recreating itself. Um, okay. I'll and we're, okay. we're losing depth. Yeah. So there's a lot more cars hanging out into the road. There's no lighting. There never has been lighting. No, that wasn't mm. part of the agreement. But um, and my understanding is, and again, it can... needs to be checked into is you can't you can't turn it over to a third party, and that's what has been happening. That's, I don't understand what you mean by that. Since it was a um, right way, the town cannot turn it over to a third party for maintenance as far as a church is supposed to do it in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that, that, that that's... I don't believe the church is taking care of that. They did. Well, or the church has been following every winter. Dean, you've been following it? Okay, I'll look at it. It's been plowed. Okay. You know, the town or D&D? &D? No, the town, the town has never plowed it. Okay, I'll check with them and see if that's. But they do, but I'm not sure if that's. But anyway, it's really tough. I will find out. Don't you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Helen Esmond has her hand up. Okay, and. Oh, well, Mr. Singh, yeah. come up, please announce yourself. I worked all day today, something I'm not used to. <laughs> David Singer, I, I would like to thank. Uh, First of all, anybody who helped us out at the library, uh, the book sale was very successful. The gross was uh, six, sixteen hundred and twenty-seven dollars, less twenty dollars because there was a counterfeit twenty that came through. Yeah. We don't know if it was intentional or not, but I thought everybody should know that there may be some counterfeit twenties coming around. And again, my thanks to all the people that helped us, <laughs> and uh, particularly Tony. I know I have some pictures there, but she did. Did a fantastic job of Prover. Miles Washburn is one of the volunteers, did a good job of helping direct people. And I would remind everybody that it's still open two more days, part time. I don't know the hours. And better if you bought books or help support in any way, thank you very much. I'm not talking about tennis or police. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Um, um, okay. Um the question I have is, can the townspeople get an update on the search for a new uh, town manager? 
Uh, yeah, that's the <laughs> first topic of our own business tonight. It doesn't say that on the... Review contract for consulting services, MMS. <laughs> okay, well, one reading that would not know what it, what it was. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sir, anyone else? No, no, that's all I got. Okay. Uh, I would like to uh, publicly thank John Leonard and the crew at the rec center, as well as the recreation committee for um, just a, a great job well done for, in my opinion, a very successful home home base. And, and Rob, our building ground guy for human <laughs> cleaned up down the ground of the yeah and for getting the PA system right. set there was a lot of players so I want to make sure we uh, in addition to the library uh, staff and we're very successful um, um, uh, it, it seemed like it was a great day so I right. thank you to everyone that was involved. Okay. Any other public comments? Uh, moving on to old business, our first item is uh, review contract for the consulting services for MMS. Um, Tom, um, we have Tom, and I'm not sure the pronouncing of the last name yet. Yeah, general, rhymes with general. Okay, okay. Um, Tom, welcome. Um, Thank you. Um, okay. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but before I sit down, to the oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, Tom, I had some general questions, but you've just given us a handout. So do you want to walk us through that? Or? Sure. Uh, I don't know whether the board wants to go into an executive session uh, for this discussion. As you can see, some of these topics uh, relate to what you're looking for in a manager, um, and it qualifies for an executive session. Uh, and I know a lot of boards don't like going into executive session at the beginning of the meeting because now everybody has to yeah, make up. a suggestion is just for the audience. Maybe we just go through mm -hmm. the questions but not have the discussion until we go to executive session uh, so okay. that people have an understanding of the process. Is that same? I think that's fine. Um, what I would say is, I think the reason we invited Tom is so you know, we have a contract, we have a you know, scope of services. And I think we wanted to make sure we understood that scope. Any questions that we had, we could get those answered. So when we get to actually discuss the contract, we've got all those questions answered, if that makes sense. So that might be step one, and then step two might be running through. Any, any questions on the questions? Well, I, I think we're all correct so far, um, and we don't want to, but I'm, I'm not sure of your intent, Tom, to hand us this, so I'm trying to figure that out. Um, I mean, what I, as Jim said, what, um, I think we want to make sure that we're all in understanding of, of the contract um, and, and scope of services. Um, so that when we do go into executive session, you know, we can actually know what we're talking about and make, come out and make a decision. But, uh, so again, I'll, I'll defer to your handout. Um, um, I mean, uh, uh, was this given to us with the idea that should you be awarded the contract that this is a discussion that needs to be happening? Yes, exactly. And uh, maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but I thought we yeah, you are. had, had a, uh, um, at least a, uh, a basic agreement uh, because we have a contract that was a section of a couple of details that after we're reading it today, I don't like to bring up. Um, <laughs> But they're minor things. And uh, so 
if nothing else, uh, we have, have some information in front of you that could probably find helpful uh, to be used to uh, organize uh, uh, your own thought process okay. and hopefully we move forward together. Um, very much so. <laughs> that is the hope that we share as well. Um, so given that, uh, in the contract you talk about um, right at the very beginning, services provided, I I'm wondering if um, for the sake of clarity and also for the general public, you can um, go through that and uh, make sure that we're all understanding what those um, what those um, are as far as your thinking and to make sure that we're on the same page with what the bottom of those are thinking. Okay. You'd like me to go down to them? Uh, however, if you want to do a summary, uh, that's, that's fine. Uh, sure. Um, so I guess I'll start with the first is what we're doing or what I intended to do with the handout. Um, meet with the select board and get an idea of uh, what you folks are looking for, the skill set and characteristics of, mm -hmm. of the new manager. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, this is what I get this week. Then we would uh, prepare, I would prepare advertising an advertisement um, and scary a little bit depending upon the media use. Um, and of course, the board would have um, the oversight of that. You know, once I prepare it, yeah. um, we would approve that before it's. What, what uh, thinking? Um, sorry to interrupt, but that's fine. Um, but I think number two is really a big item there. Um, and that's something that's one of the reasons we're looking at an external um, consultant. Um, how how are you going to determine what the most effective advertising strategy will be? Um, well, there's relatively uh, a routine. There are routine outlets to, to uh, uh, that, that you would tap. Um, surrounding states, municipal associations are very powerful. International City Managers Association mm -hmm. uh, is very powerful. Uh, probably LinkedIn is one that I would use. Um, and unfortunately, I did not bring that. That was the rest of that information. Uh, plus, uh, just networking, I think, is really, really critical for this job. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I have people that I would start approaching if we come to an agreement that they're not doing this. Um, uh, people that I know uh, want to be town managers or want to move um, or you know, managers. Um, and uh, depending upon what you're looking for, that would be the same thing that I would be reaching out. And of course, you know, then uh, we have that. Deadline for resumes, those folks would just be submitting a resume like anybody else. Okay. I'm going to maybe ask a brief question. Uh, the background check process is there like a specific firm you generally work with? Yeah, there's a couple firms, and there's a new firm on the scene that I haven't talked with yet. Okay. Um, but, um, you know, there's a... Yeah, I don't know if you want to go into the details of what's included in the background check. Yeah, I guess, um, I mean, you know, not in minutiae, but just kind of generally, you know, there's a firm, there's a cost, and, yeah, what maybe the top things are that they're looking at. Uh, well, first of all, there would be a, a criminal background check, which is very easy to do. Uh, and, um, and then there would be um, a, a check into the candidate's uh, financial situation. Um, um, 
And depending upon uh, that, the background check would include talking to previous employers, uh, people that know this individual on a personal level. Um, they would, uh, the person doing the background check would, would uh, speak to people like a neighbor. What about what about reference checks? I think that would be separate, right? Yeah. 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 Is that something you do as part of the Yeah, and honestly, reference checks aren't usually that significant. You okay. know. Yeah, there's like a major red flag. But but it's uh, something that has to be done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not really sure. It's detailed question. It needs to be the server that has to do both these things. We should walk to the standards. Just one other observation. If we're going to be advertising out of state, we may want to consider you know, whether we want to do any type of relocation expense. I think that's really pretty much as part of a package, package and yeah. package. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. Um, you you have a timeline on one on the one page, and one of my questions as we look at the contract, of just what your uh, overall expectations are of how long this process will take. If you were dealing with a most ideal select board, and we were able to deliver everything perfectly to you, um, how long do you kind of think it would be? I would say the end of September. You will have uh, uh, made a choice and, uh, and move forward. And that's pretty rapid. That's uh, um, so that's what I'd like to see happen. Um, but I've seen these go on for six months. Um, hopefully that, that doesn't happen. Well, of course, I, there's a lot of work that you'll have to do after if, if I do this after I'm done and I'm negotiating the contract and salary and things of that nature that can really drag on and and there, I've seen many situations where you, you think you have the process done the candidate is agreed verbally and then all of a sudden the candidate says, ah, I changed my mind. Sure. And then, you know, then you're going down the line because, you know, we'll probably pick five candidates, you know, five finalists. That be yeah, I think Jim's comment was also, also something that's always in the back of my head, knowing um, other searches that are going on right now is the candidate is great. You establish an agreement with salary, but then they can't find a place to live. Mm -hmm. So it falls apart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think that would be part of the screen that I would do is to let them know what the housing situation is, is it somewhat it is in local, and what the costs are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it depends where they're coming from. Yeah. Um, Mandy Clive, questions? <laughs> I'm still not clear how to address um, this. Do you not have to? Uh, I don't know what your plan was for this evening um, in terms of uh, finalizing the contract and moving forward. Um, if that's something you want to do, I'll be happy to hang around because I, I haven't looked at your agenda. I don't know if you have other things that you want to do this evening. How can you build your agenda? So I'd like to move this along and whether we go into the executive session, you know, after all business, discuss the contract with the candidate and then go into these things and just finalize this if this is what we're going to do. Otherwise, we're going to wait another two weeks. And, you know, we're going to start running into people going on vacation and, and things like this. So, um, 
<laughs> my, that would be my suggestion is we we can ask Tom to join us. We can ask that. Tom to join us in the beginning, in the middle, whenever. Yeah. And uh and then make a make a decision. I would have, I'd support that, and then we may also use that as an opportunity to take a first pass for some of them. Yeah, yeah and I, I, I personally, I like the questions. Gets us thinking about what we want to do, but I really like to see advertisements going up next week. Personally, or the end of this video. Yeah, I agree. Get get this thing rolling. Yeah. Signboard. <laughs> <laughs> so where's the the natural break would be after all business. Um, walking paths should take not much time. The policing may be a discussion. So do we want to actually go to the executive session now? And then we'll yeah, go through those items. I think we should just first. It's a, up to you, but we should last three days under and just go into executive yeah. session. Yeah. 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 Okay. If you're available. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So for now, thank you, and, yeah. and hold on if you would, please. So, oh, yeah. Uh, any other non-executive session items on the consultant services at this point? We just hold on. Yeah, I mean, I, I review the contract. Um, yeah, I think we've got what we need in there. Okay. This is just a side note question. I'm just thinking about the minutes. When you go into executive session, after you come out, do you want me to resume taking minutes for the rest of the meeting? And if so, am I allowed to stay and go work in the Worcester's office? Yes, you can do that. Executive yeah, session? Yeah, that you know. Or we can just try to blast through the agenda. And... Yeah. It's up to you. I, I don't think the police are going to take that long. To no, I think we're going to do that yet. Yeah, let's no, finish the yeah. agenda. Yeah. And, uh, the only action we would take when we get out of executive session is by ratifying the contract. Exactly. Okay. Um, is that, I don't know what you said. Then let's go with finishing old business, uh, get that done. Uh, we'll hold off on the town manager update until after the executive but, but session. So it's up to you again, but I'd say just do everything. Just get it done, get it yeah, on record, let's, and then let's. Because that won't be long. Yeah, I promise. I, I won't run over say. It's a true risk trade. We can't ask good questions. <laughs> uh, Martin, we're on, you're on with the walking path approval. So I met with uh, Tony Small and John Leonard. Um, I had it redone as the board requested. I had it broken down. Um, he calls it a pool. Actually, it's a French dream. So when the two culverts come out by the tree at the corner of the soccer field, You'll have a six to seven foot drainage hole. There'll be seven inch rock in it. The water will go down. You'll have a pipe come out and the water will just slowly trickle out. The water goes there now anyways, whether we, we want it there or not. But this will bring the water into one central location and it'll just slowly go up. Uh, and just to clarify, this uh, drain is on the southern end of the soccer field. That's correct. The entrance the to the library road. driveway. Oh, it is that. Yes. Yeah. That's, yes. Okay. Yes. That's what I thought. But I was told. Yeah. No, it's an thing. Um, the trail is going to be moved 15 feet into the soccer field, away from the riverbank. So we'll stay away from Lowe's riverbank. It's going to be six feet wide, so two people can walk side by side. So if you meet somebody. Um, they're going to uh, try and reclaim what they can, but they're going to get it to, to a, a decent walking path, and he's going to try his best to make it ADA compliant by the library where it has the steep. He'll do his best to get to where it is. He will warranty his workmanship, as you asked for, for a year. The materials, obviously, he can't, but his workmanship, he will. Um, he has family in town, and he... Wants to really do this and show the town, you know, his support. Oh, as an aside, not part of the contract, but um, as we've talked about before, um, there was a mishap when our town crew was mowing the area and they took out some of the um, saplings and bushes that were planted by the Connecticut River Conservancy, that's where I was just checking, um, and, and funded by them. Um, 
there is an agreement by our, our previous town manager to replace those plantings. Um, and what I would propose is we get going on the pathway, uh, we're moving the pathway 15 feet away from that area. Is that with the, that's with the erosion? Yeah. So, okay, so you should have to That's the specific area we're talking about. And, um, and then we engage someone from our conservation commission and the CRC to review where we have, and hopefully the town won't be needing to buy plantings, maybe they can be donated again, but um, I think that's the best strategy for us. Sounds good. Yeah. 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 Sounds good to me. The, Tom, back to last meeting, you talked about the difference in the two contracts. So looking at the two of them side by side, the only difference I see, and I'm not sure if there's a difference, is the contract from Raymond uh, specifically says it's going to be a six inch, you know, six, half, six, deep, but just six inches deep. So it's four and a half of uh, three quarter inch stone, uh, inch and a half of, well, actually, am I reading this right? Inch and a half of three quarter inch stone, four and a half inches of hard pack. All right, so we know that depth. Um, the Cody contract doesn't specify that. Uh, it specifies the number of truckloads of hard pack that doesn't have the underlying stone. Uh, I'm not sure that's a material difference. I think you just use whatever the standards are. Right. You wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, the center is actually being debated with our own project right outside right now. Yes, it is. We go with eight inches of the um, sidewalks or 12 inches. Yeah. Uh, so it's an interesting point. Um, okay, um, other yeah, questions? Make sure it has insurance. And we're um, he's, supposed insurance. Be getting, he's supposed to be getting COI yeah, okay. to me. Okay. And um, he, he, so I'm using the VLCT contract. He'll come in and okay. sign that and okay. have that ready. Okay. Okay. Questions? Interesting questions. Then move approval of the contract with because Cody Small. Yeah. Cody Small for the amount of thirty-five thousand eight hundred dollars for the uh, for the walking path at Foster Middle. I'm sorry. Uh, at Foster Middle. At Foster. Yeah. I'll second it. Thank you, Mandy. All in favor, say aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank so you, everybody. Really excited to get this. And remember, half of it's being donated. Half of the cost. Half of the cost is being donated. Correct. So, and we'll thank you, Mom, and this donor. Absolutely. Uh, moving on to policing and department safety and security. Um, uh, since we met, uh, I um, pulled up with the people we identified. Um, they said yes, and then Mandy has taken over. Um, and Mandy, why don't we speak to? Sure. Some so um, I reached out to Martin. We have a Zoom account set up for the safety and policing committee, so there will be no issues with um, any overlapping meetings. Uh, there's seven members that have agreed to be on the committee. Uh, we did a. I sent out a Google uh, survey, seeing which days worked the best. And I think that we've narrowed it down to July 10th, which is Monday at 5.30. Um, Martin and Michelle have graciously offered to send out our agenda and warn it properly once I get that to them. Um, that's a pretty brief. Yeah, it's exciting that we're going to get this started. Yep. It's the second time I said this exciting part, but um, I'm... Um, I'm, <clears throat> I was chatting with Mandy before we got started, and um, just a general question I would like to get your feedback on is, should we allow the committee to pick a co-chair, or should we appoint a co-chair, um, or a vice chair, whichever vice chair? I think it's a personal opinion, but yeah, I don't know. 
fine or whatever you think. Uh, I would let the committee just work out the details. I mean, you basically have a kickoff meeting. You're going to figure out logistics, scheduling, and who does what be part of that meeting. Okay. Yep. I think we should choose your own. <laughs> All those who don't volunteer, take one step back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or if you're really mad at someone, you appoint them. See who's on the list. No, I'm just kidding. How many uh, observations your committee members? I think we can try to work it out at the first committee meeting and see how it see how it goes. Okay. You know, um, okay. uh, there was some discussion about a minute keeper. I don't know where that oh. ended up. Uh -huh. <laughs> Should we try to work that out at the first meeting? And if we don't get anyone, do we have that resource available to us? We'll discuss it. Okay, perfect. We'll discuss it. Okay, yeah. If you don't work it out, please let me know. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I think we'll, a bunch of us will let you know. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the first to know. Okay. So, do we have a report? So, as you all know, I'm very impatient about this subject. Do we have a, a timeline for when we want the committee to report back? We do. We do. We do have end of October. It's in the charge. Great. Yep. Oh, okay. And I'll make sure to have copies of the charge okay. as well as some other resources available for the first week. Right. And uh, both Mandy and I have been talking about resources available. Resources. A member of the committee uh, suggested that we look at. Uh, the town of Norwich, which has gone through a number of policing studies. Um, I had an opportunity to meet with the um, assistant town manager, um, and uh, she in turn um, sent along some information that Mandy has now. Um, Mandy did point out that uh, it's it's a it's it's a bit dated. Seven years old. Or it's, I think it was I think it was from two thousand twelve. Yeah. I think was the date that I saw on it, which feels a bit dated, um, given given that the um, culture of policing has changed uh, quite considerably over the past few years. So yeah. I don't know if it's still. You know. So we're getting we're gathering as much information as we can to um, um, to help supplement. Uh, yeah. Okay. Any other um, thoughts or questions? Or if anything you need from us? Not at this time. <laughs> Unless you want to be the minute keeper. I can't because we'd have to warn a select board meeting and we'd all have to do that. Right. Darn it. I was I tried. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we don't have any new business. So no, no new business this uh, week. You're wrong. For All right. um, the visitor's office took on water again. Uh, we keep kicking this can down the road. Uh, Servco came in. They checked the wall. There was not much water in there. He does not feel there's any um, mold growing at this point because there wasn't a lot of water. Stacy was proactive. The whole listers were proactive. They put a fan on. He said that he thinks that really helped. Any any maybe issues. Um, Rob was kind enough to put a, a cover around the bottom. I got to have him take off half the cover so the air can keep flowing in, in the wall. Um, the um, the engineers that are, are doing the scope uh, said there's a cement pad out there that they would recommend ripping up, digging down, putting some plastic rocks, get the water away from the building. So that's kind of their, their fix when we get to that point. So, so basically, you know, do the best we can for now until that project. Yeah, exactly. So um, they're staying ahead of it. Um, if it does get worse in that office, um, my thoughts is I will put them over into the town manager's office and Everett will have to work out here. Um, um, when are we going to rectify this situation? Um, when the, we get the uh, update from the contractors that are, are doing the scope of work at this point. So from the architect? From the architect, yes. Yeah, to see if we, we try that step first. If that doesn't work, then we will have to attack it a different way. Have they given us a timeline? Yeah, he has not. I'll uh, reach out to him and see what's going on. He, it looks like he's closing in because I get a, a rather large bill today, emailed to me. So I think they're, they're closing in. 
Um, we get mold, it's going to be incredibly expensive. Yeah, I agree, but we, we do not at this point. Yeah, so, I know. We had to cut it out two years ago, the bottom of the boards, to stay ahead of it. Um, yeah. He assured us there was none at this time. So I will keep checking the serve pro coming stay in the Well, it's not a matter of that, it just needs to fix. Right, uh, right, exactly. The can's gonna get quick, yeah. keep, keep, can't even keep kicking down the road. So. Is any water getting into the ball? Uh, no, oh. no, no, the rug, um, like I said, see, uh, they put the fan on it really, I think that really helped it quite a bit. Can we put temporarily like sheet plastic out there now? So it can't bring no, the cement's right. Put it right up against it, unfortunately. So, so the town crew dug up, dug up way down, put a bunch of stone in, and that sold a lot of it. But we had just so much rain that this one just yeah, no. um, Otherwise, we've been staying ahead of it. Uh, the pizza oven's getting a little bit of an update. Um, they're going to put a cement table on it in the next couple coming months. It's going to stay inside the footprint. Um, they have the same thing at the Norwich pizza oven. So the pizza. The committees uh, will be will be building that here in the next couple of, uh, of weeks. Board Mayor, is her, um, the oven committees also have been talking with Martin about a, a long range plan where they want to be able to rent the oven to for group activities. Um, <coughs> there's a plan in place for training and so on and so forth, but uh, insurance is getting to be a, a insurance is going to be the problem, a real issue because yeah. of fire. Yeah, um, how hot it is. Um, 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 so yeah, we'll have to discuss that. From an injury perspective? Or? I think so. Christine emailed me. She's on the, She's gone now, but she emailed about the, um, um, the the insurance we ask people to get doesn't cover that. Yeah. Christine so, Barney is a member of the community. Yeah, so we have to, we'll have to, we'll have to dig deep, a little deeper into that as we get closer to that. Uh, there's some thought, could we do use a waiver approach, but I'm not an insurance person. I'm not either. So yeah, we have to talk to the lawyer and figure out what we can do with that. Um, window dressers are back with a big crew this year. They're going to be working at Damon Hall. Uh, Sarah Bruce has reserved the hall from the 12th through the 19th. Um, they have a bunch of product that they're going to store elsewhere. I believe there's three crews coming in to work during the day. So they're coming back this fall. Um, the tax rate, uh, with the select, uh, the lister should be done with the grievances by July 21st. So July 25th, 6th or 7th, I would like a quick select board meeting to approve the tax rate. Uh, we do this every year. Uh, we're a little late this year, as we've known with the delays. So please let me know what day, day of the week works best for everybody. I think that's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Of July, so please let me know what works. I'm flexible that week. Okay, uh, I'd, I'd be happy to invite you all to May, and that's your recap. Yeah, those are going to be done, so we'll have four out of five. Okay, hopefully, I can do Thursday. That Thursday. week, I do have an obligation Tuesday right. or Wednesday, or I can do it a little later anytime after seven. After seven. So it looks like the 27th, Tom. Does that work? Is that the July Thursday? Yeah, July 27th. Clyde, does that work for you? I can't do the 27th. Peter, is that for you? <laughs> yeah, I can do the 27th. All right, so July 27th. Yeah, that's fine. 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 Yeah, that's Thank you. 5.30. 5.30, yeah, yeah. This should be a quickie. Rain, rain, rain. We have had our fill of rain. Uh, the roads have held up very well. We had a small washout on Rice Road. We've had a couple of culverts that washed out, but the guys have stayed ahead of the culverts. Uh, Bill and I talk each day about culverts, and we've had a few residents call about culverts, and we've, we've stayed ahead of it, so we're, we're looking very good. Uh, Windsor County Sheriff's present has been a great experience. We got a call from a resident in North Heartland who absolutely loved that they were slowing the people down in North Heartland. So it was it was a hit. Um, I heard no issues of any kind. Um, they were on Queechy Road a few nights when I came home, so it, it went very well. Um, July 17th is the next select board meeting. At three o'clock, I'd like to meet up at um, the Cowdery's place, please. He is going for a salvage yard permit again. Um, 
you, you applied two weeks ago. You brought his check in. We have 30 days to to um do the process. So we're gonna look at look at it on the 17th at three o'clock. He's gonna show us the area he wants to close in. Um we're gonna have our select board meeting. The abutters are all invited to that select board meeting to discuss it. Um, John Paulette has been kind enough to help me with this. Um, we're looking to make sure where all the wells, waters are in the area where he wants to put the fence. Um, so he's gonna try and do this process again. As you know, we did this two years ago. Um, we have new board members, obviously. So two years ago, he went for a salvage yard permit. We were close to um, finishing the process and he pulled he pulled the plug. Um, Martin, I did um, myself reread that older agreement, but it's my understanding that there's a new agreement with Mr. Calvert? Yes. So when he wants to do so where the where the existing building body shop is, he wants to go up that way. He said before he wanted to go to the so the building would be on your right, it was on your left. Now he wants to go up the hill a little bit. It's gonna be a smaller area. Yeah. Okay. And we'll have a copy of that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. John's been kind enough to put that on together. What time again? Three thirty. Three o'clock. Okay. On, on site. There. On site. Yep. So, uh, will you invite the planning commission? I'll be glad to. Yeah. Much. How big is this lot? I don't remember, Jim. I'm sorry. More than two acres. No, no. What he wants to cover? No, the whole. The whole. Oh, I, I don't know that answer. Because there's two properties there. I think it's two, I think the son and the father. It's a big it's a big area. It is a very big area. And he's adding additional commercial. No, well, so he wants to do is have a salvage yard. So he wants to put a fence up and, and put junk cars in there. Okay. Yeah, salvage yard, there'll be a garage, there'll be a new car, new car. Yeah. So there's but a new free enterprise. So is it a new building that's gonna go on to do fence? No, it's gonna be a fence. Just a fence. Just a fence structure. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. No structure, just a fence. Has to be a fence. The reason I ask is if you're doing construction there, you know, as a commercial entity, you know, an Act 250 permit could be required if there's no construction. Yeah, that's probably not. Yeah, and I think everyone is aware that uh, there was, was a legal agreement reached through the courts uh, that Mr. Calgary is subject to um, for the entire location. So this is a new attempt to uh, minimize the footprint uh, and, and to start again. Yeah. Well, well, can we see a copy of that legal agreement? Just so we have some background for all of this. Do I need to start I can forward it to you. Absolutely. Yeah. You know. yeah. Okay. yeah whatever background information you might have on this for, for the newbies. Yeah, I think actually, I think we all need it because I don't think anyone of us was on this board for that discussion. Happened. No, this court case just was just. Um, well, there's two two things we were we just blended together. Yeah, we have whatever the new permit is. Or I haven't seen that cop a copy of that. No, no, that's correct. And uh, and then there was the court agreement. Yes. Um, which maybe you sent to me. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so I will get that to everybody tomorrow. Morning. Okay. The new permit in that. The grand list is. Oh, so, wait, so how does this work? Does what's the obligation of V Trans or what? What? What's so, sort of the coordinating state agency? It's the Department of Environmental Services. Uh, specifically, there's a sub. Department comes with that, uh, and they are very aware of the application, and they have to oversee the application. Uh, in addition to the town approval, right? So they're, they're, if if the board approves this uh, salvage yard, then they so they've met our ordinance, but the state ordinance obviously is. So we could say, yes, we agree, we'll allow this, but the Department of Environmental Conservation may say no. Uh, no, if we say yes, they'll, it's they'll yes. probably say yes. I get it, okay. All right, so yes. Uh, the grand list has been lodged, so the listers have their work cut out for them. And my last thing is the North Heartland School got some more broken windows last night. They went inside and did a little damage on the inside the building, awesome. So I have, Rob is contacting um, Claremont Glassworks to come in and fix the windows. Do you have cameras up there? We do not. 
and something we want to consider. They're not very expensive to do like Blink or Arlo cameras. They can be monitored, but go back and look at them. Just a thought. Yeah, it's a minimal we'll, investment in it. I want to make a motion that the town manager look into an Arlo system to put inside the North Arlo School. A-R-L-O. A-R-L-O is one company. There's Blink. There's a ton of them. Okay. In Martin, the last time this happened, I thought we had, you know, we were there with the folks that were interested in the North Arlington School. Yes. And one of those folks that, that they had some information on. Maybe, uh, yeah, one of the kids might have been, and it could be the same case. I don't know if he reached out to the state police or not. Um, I can call the state police to make a report tomorrow. Does it look like kids kind of stuff, though? Or was the bottom window broken, and that's how they went in? But but the person that raised that yeah Craig Smith is um, is that someone you can follow up with because yeah. I think we you know we were there we had the conversation yes we did have a close circle yeah yeah I'll get hold of Craig too I'll send an email yeah I got called please to add it to the report that's all I have for tonight. Okay. Uh, is there any correspondence? I have no correspondence this week. Okay. So let's skip the future agenda items. Just a, can we do just quick three corners update? Um, uh, sure. If you want to start, I can go right ahead. ahead. There's, I think, two things uh, that the select board should be interested in. Um, one is we already know that um, there was an oversight by the original engineering firm, uh, and there are no street lights in as part of the project right now. Um, uh, in a meeting today, um, it was agreed with VTrans um, and um, primarily be trans that uh, Rita would go to the um, original uh, engineering firm and request uh, a specific lighting study according to the state standards that measures the photometrics uh, and so on. There's also um, um, some aesthetics that come into play because the street lights that will be potentially on new poles, um, and that's what, where we're going to remove the two telephone poles here and have uh, uh, a more ornamental sort of street lamp, a traditional light. Um, this is, since it's a historic building, um, we have to um, also have this historic, um, the state historic group has to sort of approve what we do do. Um, so we're starting that. Um, the hope is that we can go with solar lights um, and that the, uh, uh, the, the, there would be a backup system of 10 hours for each light. Um, it's, 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 it's a, Shot in the dark. Um, uh, the state is approving. No, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, and um, there's a benefit to our our using those in that we would not have to do any. Um, should this become a phase two part of the operation, we would not have to redig things to to run conduits to to power the lights. So uh, uh, Rita is taking responsibility. I actually thought she was had already issued that, but she was she was uh, ready to go and get that work done. With I don't. The engineering. I don't believe they're going to be able to do it with this project right now. So uh, they'll have to change the, the permit, and there will be a big delay because they don't know when they can get the product and. Yeah, and I did ask the question of what are the uh, safety requirements um, uh, for the new intersection. Um, 
and that's going to all come out in the study. So it's possible uh, that we're going to wind up with old telephone poles that are going to linger until phase two of the project. Are they going to be also looking at the, that corner because it's you know um, where the green space is because it'll be green space, trees, and and the sidewalk, correct? Right. You so just it said something has potential important. to be quite dark. Um, yeah. There is definitely uh, proposed lights there. Okay. Um, now the question is, uh, the state is have has us putting trees there, but what's the interaction of a solar panel on a street post and a tree? Um, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so there's some more. Maybe they use traditional lights there, or something. Yeah. So then well, they have, then they have dark. to dig it back up and uh -huh. put the conduit in. So we could go back to the 1940s when the street lights were turned off at 10 o'clock every night. And everybody went home well, and, and behaved. Or we could go back further and, and we could take most We could light them with gas. Uh, uh, yeah. Kerosene. Kerosene, there you go. <laughs> My great grandfather used to do some quick question. There's a new pole by the There's a new pole outside the hall. Can those poles have lights put on them now so that at least the approaches? From every direction or list. So there's a light on this one. Yeah. The one at BG's, we're, um, we're trying to get removed. So let's go so into part two of that yeah. to help answer that question. Um, in the previous uh, plans, um, we had we had a new poll at the post office. Um, right next to the post office. And the second one was, I'm gonna call it the apartments at the library drive. Um, um, and those poles were strictly service poles for the building. So the power was gonna come out of the ground from our brand new underground burial, up the pole into the buildings. Um, the previous owner of uh, that complex, um, uh, was satisfied with that um, and did not want to incur any additional expenses. Uh, last week, uh, Martin and I met with um, the current owner, John McGrill, uh, and uh, a representative from his company. Um, and uh, we have a preliminary um, interest in Mr. McGrill and in burying the entrance to those buildings, which would mean those poles would, would go. Um, the pole by the apartment building uh, is really interesting. Jim, you're correct, there is a new pole there right now. Yeah. Well, that new pole is right in the middle of the brand new sidewalk that's about to be made. So Green Mountain Power has to move that brand new pole um, some feet, inches away from the sidewalk. So we have a compound set of situations. Um, on Thursday afternoon, um, uh, in a conversation with Edward Hammond, we were supposed to have a representative from Green Mountain Power come out and look at this area with us. Um, they, um, we wound up standing out uh, on the, the intersection on cell phones talking with this person and Green Mountain Power is hesitant to re-permit this movement of telephone poles um, because they feel they've been permitting and re-permitting quite a bit. Um, I would like to get the sense of the select board um, whether I feel we should push on this item, um, especially since Green Mountain Power has to move the pole that they already put up uh, and we have um, a property owner that is willing to incur the expense on their building side. Um, um, and um, so those are the two updates. Um, so, so you're calling it phase two. So if the pole is in the way, then we would not be able to complete the sidewalk project because we have a telephone pole right in the middle of the sidewalk. Right. Right. So then that would then delay the project until next year, or? It's not clear to me whether the re-permitting that they're doing is associated with moving the new pole out of the new sidewalk. Huh? And the other question is, 
was Fremont Power aware of the design of the sidewalk? And was this an oops? No, they, they were they were gonna make it four feet. So sidewalk's five feet, they were four feet for that one tile. Then we'll go back to five feet. Who decided that? I think Fremont Power did. On their own? Oh, I don't know that. Well, there's a pole on the sidewalk on the way. Yes. So that's the, that's the pole that they're going to move back two feet so the sidewalk stays the same width all the way across. Right. But I, I guess the question is really two part. What's the width of the sidewalk? Five feet. Five feet. ADA access is like three feet. Ah, five, five feet. feet five feet. Yes, yeah, five feet. With yep. telephone poles? You're not supposed to have a telephone pole that's inside. Okay. So the sidewalk would go like this all around like that. But complete streets compliant. But I look out the window here. We have telephone poles across the street, aren't they on the so this is the new, change is made to design. Yes. So new poles have a different requirement. And I think any this would be grandfathered in because who knows when I think there's a new pole out here too. I didn't see a new pole put up there. I think it's the old one. No, that pole, that, that, that the pole is that. Once the street light is so figured out, that pole is kind of on the sidewalk. There, so don't matter. Yeah. No. Yeah, I can tell you that um, I sat at this table with a lot of people, and until we walked outside and said, This pole, you know, and yeah. touched it, <laughs> we were all. There's a pole on that. I ask one quick question. Are these poles, are we intending to go all, all night or, or not? Well, well, I do mention that they would turn off automatically. They can't, is that just something? There goes to a part of uh, the automatic. <laughs> the town treasurer pulled the switch. Okay. Every night. I don't know what's difficult about my question. Are we intending them to go burn all night? So yeah. let me answer you this way. There's going to be a, a photometric study. And as I understand what a photometric study is, is that they're going to be looking at any minimum amount of light and with directed to the, specifically the areas. There would be no light pollution. Um, light pollution would be minimized. Um, and that we would not be lighting up um, like so the night yeah. 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 But, but generally they're kept on all night. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so is there uh, just food for thought? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if Green Mountain is going to look for more money. I don't, yeah. A lot of moving parts here, clearly, but we ought to at least try to understand the scope and the cost, right? Because if we're going to make for which part for for whatever changes we're going to make to the project, if we're going to make changes, we should understand kind of what the scope is, what the cost right. is, because that's right. so additional we, cost. We, that. we are working in two different avenues. Uh, we are and we are getting costs yeah. for at this at this point. Um, we also have a, a bit of a wrinkle in that our uh, town contact with Green Mountain Power is, has been re, is, is been changed. Um, Unfortunately, uh, Dan was very knowledgeable. Yeah, um, so it's a great loss. So, at this point. Um, so there's a couple of things, but but we are getting very definitely um, the cost and also what what impact on the permitting. And also the scope of question as far as uh, I, mean, I don't want to kind of start saying let's move to phase two, let's move to phase two. The street lighting is very important. Um, and if we can't do solar, then I, I don't want to be redigging, putting conduits. Um, I, I, we, we received enough negative comments about redoing what the state had done. I can only imagine that would be. That would foster new comments, um, and um, the part with the lights by the the, um, the two private enterprises. Um, that's a work in progress. Um, the owner would incur the expenses uh, on that side, uh, and it's not clear to me what Green Mountain Power would 
incur if they had to remove the pole. The conduit is already underground and literally coming out of the ground to the new pole so that there may be a need for um, right. and that term, term, a junction box. But if that pole comes down, it's going to go back underground for the next pole. Correct. But so it, would come, it would come into a junction box and then the owner would connect to that junction box. Right. But if you're taking out a pole that's some of those lines from additional pole that whole section wants to go underground. Does that make sense? Uh, are we talking lighting now or are we talking uh, wiring? Wire. Wire. So you have a pole at the apartment buildings or the post office, right? You have another pole further down towards the library. The wires. No, those two don't go together. They don't, those pull no, that no, they're not connected. No, that's, and they come from different The wires are already underground. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the iron engine, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. They've already got buried and they have to retake the. Yeah. So if they take those two poles out, they have to put more conduit under for the wire to go to the building. I sent this meeting to the yeah. building. Um, to the building, correct. I used to get kitted when I was working and my project team would say, do you have sheep when you're going to sleep? Because I had a sheep enterprise. Um, and what I'm saying now is I'm going to sleep counting telephone poles and power poles and yeah. trying to sort so of stress make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> um, so I understand the, the photometric standard that you however, these are stock lights. The Green Mountain Power is already probably using, not necessarily, or we could get. So what, my, let me finish. Yeah. What I'm trying to get at here is the there are some lights that that have been used in before that have gone through this study. So what we should try to do right. is right. figure out right. a light head that works to expedite. The 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 uh, permitting process. Um, uh, Green Mountain Power has installed solar lights off of Sykes Avenue. Yes, I know so, that. Is it Gilson? Or yeah, or yeah, yeah between the post office and the Estomo Bay. Yeah. Um, um, so they're beginning, just beginning yeah. to experiment with this. Um, uh, and and um, um, I hear what you're saying. But pretty much all lights nowadays are downcast light. They don't allow anymore for lights to go up in the air. So I think all the lights are going to have a hat. Yep. Yes. So, so my point is, I think we should be grumpy about this and say there was an hopes and, and make our engineering firm who, who missed this push this. I, it's it's yes, and I would also yeah. like to push Green Mountain Power right. and, and the repermit it. Um, right. and, the board is okay with that. I'll continue to work with Martin and Rita, and I have some contacts to sort of push uh, a little bit. Um, so it, 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 it could do, just so you know, it could delay the project. But we're, I'm very conscious of that, and, and I'm not talking about delaying the project. Right. You know, it, it, uh, and I'm tired of having that thrown at us, uh, and then people taking a week and a half to do anything uh, because they're not worried about it. Uh, you know, if we move quickly, especially with the telephone poles, uh, or understanding the, the, the placement of streetlights, um, that, that's important information. You know, I'm very happy to, once we get the information, to sort of save face to. Um, but I don't want to have a redigging um, if we can avoid it. So, right. And I don't want to jump back to stage one or phase two. But, if we have to do phase two at a later time, I get phase one done. Yeah. Because yeah, I feel, I feel. We, we, the owners, we reached out to, or the right. board reached out, right. it's a late decision. So, right. like, but, and my yeah. final comment is Dan Austin's a great guy, but he's not the only oil engineer that Fremont Power has. And so they've known for a long time that yes. Dan is retired. Right. So to say they're, they may be short. Well, on the screen, that's the power of moving him around. It's not but whatever. So I think the last caution we is that we're, you know, there's scope changes in the world. So I understand that. If the costs are significant, 
we need to come back and understand that and approve it. Of course, because you know we're spending somebody else's money. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And we need lights. And I think the, the, the street lights would is the park would be an additional cost. But the problem is if we have no poles, there's no way to hook the lights to it. Which is why I'm gun shy about taking out poles that are already here. So none of those would go that, you know, they, they may be removed in phase two once we, once we start doing the lights. You know, my concern really is uh, the digging. You know, if we have that, I agree. You don't want to tear up on something else. No, I agree. Okay, sorry. Thank, thank you for, uh, I mean, yeah, for scared of us. I mean, was... Yeah, I think, I think um, I, the, the team of Martin. Um, uh, Everett Hammond um, and Everett Hammond's additional engineers with GFI um, and Knotts have been really on top oh, of they have. They've been uh, absolutely. So I, 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 feel, um, I feel from a schedule perspective, we're, absolutely, we're, yes. we're right there. Um, you know, they did what we asked for the 4th of July. So we're doing that. Okay. Good. Okay, I need to take a breather. But anyway, so we enter into executive session. So we, yes, we can... I'll make a motion that we enter executive session pursuant to 1 BSA 313 A1A discuss contracts. I'll second that. Thank you, Mandy. Uh, all in favor say aye. Uh, before we do that, and that uh, if necessary, we invite Tommy and Earl to join us in executive session. So, all right, so let's uh... amend it. We'll amend it to invite to, to, invite. to include Tom Arrow in the executive session. And I'll second that one. Okay. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All right, so we are back from executive session at 8.06 p.m. And I'd like to make a motion that we enter into a contract with MMS with the changes that we discussed to the contract. Uh, for consulting services to recruit a new town manager. And we authorize our interim town manager to sign the contract. I'll second it. Uh, Mandy seconded. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, thank you. Is there any other business? Okay. Can I make a motion? <laughs> We need to the Mayor Campbell, please. You'll get more information before I have a phone call with her next Tuesday. Okay. Can, I, can I just recap on old, uh, just ask about an old piece of business? We previously talked about the activity center. Since we're now in July and we're two months into the summer, are we done with that discussion? So I had a chat with her and I can't, I couldn't come up with a, a, a concrete reason why to skip the rent and the electricity. Okay. Um, she took out two PPP loans during COVID. She has 35 babies waiting to, to come on. Um, the enrollment has not gone down. She's burned through her savings, but she, I had no concrete. Re obviously, this she raised her prices 15%, but she raised salaries because to keep employees. Um, I have no concrete reason of why not to. Um, she's a local business, 30 plus years. She's a town resident. Okay. And it's been approximately how long since she actually has been paying rent? Um, I think it's only been four years. So she never paid rent before. David got the contract up and running. Okay. Um, maybe five years. But um, my, my, my only recommendation is maybe half rent July and August. The electricity bill, I feel, is, is her responsibility totally. Because we have no control over that, mm. but that's that's just my my empathy for a small business. Yeah. Um, any thoughts? On I think it's too late to stick yeah. this up right now, personally. Yeah, okay. and and it's not more. It's not. So it's right, right now, so it's uh, we want the owner to come and talk to us, but I I will I will abstain from writing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's just table it. Okay. Any other? Questions or business? That wasn't on as an answer. No, it wasn't. Well, it's on no. for a future future, right? But not. Well, that's the contract. Yeah, yeah that's the lease. Yep. Yeah. 
All right. Then I, unless there's any other comments, I'd make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.